Hi friends, so I'm super excited. Today we're going to be starting a new unit with our read-alouds and we're going to be focusing on Cinderella stories. So I'm sure you've all heard at least one version of the story Cinderella or maybe you've seen a movie of Cinderella, um, but she's a character that I would assume most of us know about. And so we're going to get to explore some different versions of Cinderella stories because it turns out lots of different authors have written versions of Cinderella that take place all over the world. So we're going to get to explore all those stories in these upcoming read-alouds. And today we're going to read just a very classic version of Cinderella. This is very similar to the story that you probably have seen in the movies. It's just called Cinderella and it's by Marsha Brown. And so we're gonna read half of this story today and then tomorrow's read aloud, we'll do the other half. Um, and just like with last week when we were reading The Giraffe and the Pelly and Me, I want you to think about the story elements in the story because we're gonna be using those to help us answer questions at the end of the story. So that means you're gonna be thinking about the characters in the story, the setting of the story, any problems that arise in the story, and then the resolution. So how the characters in the story are able to solve those problems. And this again is Cinderella. Once upon a time, there was a gentleman who took for his second wife the proudest and haughtiest woman that was ever seen. She had two daughters who were just like her in every way, bad disposition and all. The husband had a young daughter of his own, but she was sweet and good. She took after her mother, who had been the best in the world. The marriage ceremony was hardly over when the stepmother's temper flared up. She could not abide this young girl, whose goodness made her own daughters seem more hateful than ever. She gave her the vilest household tasks. It was Cinderella who scoured the pots and scrubbed the stairs, Cinderella who polished the bedchamber of Madame, and also those of her daughter. Here's Cinderella. Cinderella slept on a wretched straw pallet in a miserable garret away up in the top of the house. Her sisters lay on beds of the, of the latest fashion in fine chambers with inlaid floors and great mirrors in which they could admire themselves from the tops of their silly heads to the bottoms of their feet. The poor girl put up with everything. She dared not complain, even to her father. He would only have scolded her, scolded her because, alas, he was tied hand and foot to his wife's apron string. When her work was done, Cinderella would creep to the chimney corner and sit there in the ashes, earning for herself the nickname Cinder Seat. But her younger stepsister, who was not quite so rude as the elder, gave her the name of Cinderella, and Cinderella she was. In spite of her rags, however, Cinderella was a hundred times more beautiful than her sisters, for all their fine clothes. Now it happened that the king's son was to give a ball. He invited everyone who was anyone, including our two young misses, for they cut quite a figure in the land. They were delighted with themselves, busy as you please, choosing their costumes and headdresses to go with them. More work for Cinderella, for it was she who starched their linen and puffed their ruffles. Chitter chatter of nothing from morning to night, but what they would wear and how they would look. I, announced the elder, shall wear my cherry velvet with the English trim. As for me, said the younger, I have nothing but my usual petticoat, but to make up for that, I shall wear my cloak of flowered gold and my diamond circlet, which is not to be sneezed at either. They sent for the best hairdresser to pile their curls into two horns. None but the best beauty patches would do. They called in Cinderella to ask for her advice, for she had very good taste in these matters. Cinderella gave them the best advice in the world and even offered to dress their hair, which of course was what they really wanted in the first place. While she was working over them, they would say to her, Cinderella, now wouldn't you just like to go to the ball? Oh, you're making fun of me. A ball is not for such as I. You're right, cinder seat at a ball, how people would laugh. And they laughed themselves at the very thought. Someone else would have made mess of their heads, but not Cinderella. She was good. She dressed them perfectly. The two sisters were in such a twitter of excitement that for two days they hardly took time to eat. They strained and snapped a dozen corset strings, pulling them too tight in order to shrink their waists. All along, they paraded in front of the looking glass. At 
the last, at last, the happy day arrived. They departed, and Cinderella followed them with her eyes as long as she could. When she could no longer make them out, she began to cry. It was all in tears that her godmother found her. Why, what is the matter, my child? I wish, oh, I wish Cinderella was so choked with tears that she could not get her words out. Now Cinderella's godmother was, a real, was really a fairy. She said to her, you wish to go to the ball, is it not so? Oh yes, sighed Cinderella. Well, just be a good girl, said her godmother. I'll see that you go. She took Cinderella into her chamber and said, now go into the garden and bring me a pumpkin. Cinderella ran to look for the most beautiful pumpkin she could find and carried it back to her godmother. How on earth could a pumpkin take her to the ball? Cinderella could not guess. Her godmother scooped the pumpkin all out, leaving only the rind. Then she touched it with her wand, and just like that, the pumpkin turned into a beautiful coach, gilded with pure gold. The fairy godmother then went to look for the mouse trap. In it were six sprightly mice. She told Cinderella to lift the door of the trap, and as each mouse scampered out, she tapped them with her wand. Each mouse was instantly turned into a handsome, spirited horse. And there, all in all, was a fine set of six horses of a beautiful, dappled mouse gray. Now for a coachman. I'll go and see, said Cinderella, if there's a rat in the rat trap. We can make a coachman out of him. You are right, said her godmother. Go see. Cinderella brought the rat trap. In it were three plump rats. The fairy chose the one that had the most handsome whiskers. When she touched him with her wand, there was a sleek coachman with the most elegant mustaches you had ever seen. Then the fairy godmother said to Cinderella, Go now into the garden. Behind the watering pot you will find six lizards. Bring them to me. Cinderella had hardly fetched the lizards when her godmother turned them into six footmen, who hopped up behind the carriage in their fancy livery and lace and held on as if they had never done anything else in their lives. Then the fairy said to Cinderella, There now, that will take you to the ball. Are you not pleased? Oh yes, but must I go in these rags? Her fairy godmother had scarcely touched Cinderella with her wand when her rags changed into a gown of gold and silver embroidered with rubies, pearls, and diamonds. Then she gave her pair of little glass slippers, the prettiest in the whole world. Thus arrayed, Cinderella climbed into the coach, but her godmother charged her above all. Do not stay a moment after midnight. If you do, your coach will turn back into a pumpkin, your horses into mice, your footmen into lizards, and your riches into rags. Cinderella promised her godmother that she would not fail to leave the ball before midnight. Away she went, beside herself with joy. The illustrations in this book are beautiful. So we're going to stop there, we're going to pause there for now, and we'll read the rest of the story tomorrow. So for today, you can fill out uh, the story map that I sent to your families, or you can create your own story map, and I want you to just write about the story elements that you've heard so far. So who are the characters we've heard about so far? What is the setting so far in the story? Are there any problems that have come up in the story? And if there are problems, have they been resolved? Has there been a solution yet, or not yet? So that's what you can think about today with this first half of the book, and we'll read the second half tomorrow.